Greetings from Sleepy Me. Thanks so much for joining me. As the title suggests, I will be painting the Fontaine Saint Michel. I figured it's a fantastic place to start, as it's a very central monument here in Paris. As I paint, I will be talking about the history of the fountain, how it came to be, and the symbolism of Saint Michel, also known as Archangel Michael. All right, so let's dive right in. I did the drawing and then I started laying down some of the pigment for the background and I realized quickly that I put on way more than I wanted. And so here I am spreading it around. Today I'm using Windsor Newton watercolors and the Viarco art graph, which is the little black disc that you see in the middle of my palette. The paper is Arches and I'm really not keeping track of my brushes, I'm just kind of using whichever one I deem appropriate. I've taken the action out of the apps recess that it's originally found in on the fountain. I decided to give Michael the space that he needed to fight this demon in my interpretation of the fountain. And so now the action is taking place somewhere in the clouds. So let's talk a little bit about the mastermind behind the fountain. His name was Gabriel de Vieux. He was born in Paris in 1824 and he studied at the Ecole de Beaux-Arts. He graduated with an architecture degree and then he went on to win the second Grand Prix of Rome and after that he became the inspector general for architecture as in the chief architect of all public parks and spaces in Paris. He worked alongside someone who we will inevitably be discussing later on, Baron Hausmann, the famous city planner in charge of reconstructing all of Paris. The construction of this fountain went between 1858 and 1860, making it the last wall-mounted monumental fountain in Paris. A little fun fact about the view is that he is actually the one who designed all of the iconic Parisian fixtures that people love, like the pavilions, the benches, the bandstands, fountains, lampposts, fences, signposts, <laughs> and balustrades. Uh, he also designed the Palais de Trocadero, which was demolished in 1937 to make way for the Théâtre Chaillot. Uh, it, we'll, we'll get back to it. He's got a long list of accomplishments, including also the Cirque d'Hiver, where he collaborated again with the same sculptor in charge of the Fontaine Saint-Michel. His name was Francisque Duret, and he designed and executed the statue that you see, meaning the scene of the angel stepping on to the demon. He was born in 1804 in Paris again, and he was the son of a sculptor. He won the first Grand Prix of Rome in 1823 alongside Augustin Dumont. In terms of the significance and symbolism, I found a prayer contemporary to the fountain. Uh, it began being recited in, in low mass in Catholic churches in 1886, so this is around 30 years after the construction of the, the fountain. And it is as follows. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be your protection against the malice and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of Heavenly Host, by the divine power thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. This is a fairly traditional representation as it comes to Saint Michael 
It reminds me actually a lot of a piece that I studied in Roman Baroque by Guido Reni called Archangel Michael. It's currently in its home in Santa Maria della Concezione in Rome. Because Guido Reni painted this in 1636, it is fully plausible to me that Francis Duret would have seen it when he was in Rome to win the Grand Prix in 1823. Something that's always impressed me about the fountain are the beautiful chimeras in front of it. Usually you don't see animals depicted so realistically. But the sculptor Afra Jacquemart was an expert animal sculptor. He was a, what they call an animalier. Here's a little summary of all the name spellings and dates of the men in charge. What you're saying now completely contradicts what I was taught in my watercolor class <laughs> in university, which was that going back on top of your watercolor painting with white is just never going to serve you in any sort of way. But look, I cannot be tamed. When you do try to go back into it with traditional water white watercolors, I always somehow end up picking up pigment from the ground of the painting and it ends up being a muddled gray sort of soupy mess and that for sure is not satisfying. But what I'm doing here is I actually started using acrylic ink as, the, as per suggestion of a, an artist that I met here. Uh, so I'm using just, uh, I think it's called Liquitox so white acrylic ink uh, that I diluted with some water. The texture is a little bit different, but I found that it actually does stay on top a lot better. There's sort of like a transparency if you mix it with enough water so that you don't end up losing elements that you worked hard on underneath it. Sort of like I'm doing right now, but don't worry, I'll get them back. The next day I reached sort of a crisis where I just felt like the painting was way too bright now and that uh, some of the action was lost and I wanted a more of a duality between the protagonist and the obviously ruined antagonist. And although I panicked at first, as I always do, making huge changes, I think that I'm much happier with it because it really, to me at least, symbolizes a lot more like the action of the painting and what's actually going on and the Satan or evil spirit being thrust into hell. It's a lot more action oriented, I suppose, but you let me know.
and then I decided that the dark values were not dark enough and so I went back into it with my Faber-Castell water soluble pencils just to like, give it a little more drama, a little more darkness. And some of the finishing touches that I was really gonna omit but I just love making things more complicated than they have to be so I ended up <laughs> adding some of the details in the armor of St. Michael. And finally, the tape ASMR. Thank you so much for joining me. This is my first ever YouTube video and this is a lot of fun for me to make. I hope that you enjoyed the painting and I hope that you enjoy the facts. And please let me know what you would enjoy in terms of a format. I'm very iffy still on how to, how to format it specifically or precisely so that it's not boring and <laughs> entertaining for you. Uh, so please like it, give it a thumbs up. Uh, comment if you like, subscribe obviously, and I will see you next time.